Hi everyone, today we're going to be speaking about the video conferencing tool called Zoom. Now, many people at the university, staff and students are making excellent use of the Zoom conferencing tool app to have lectures online, host meetings and staying in touch. Uh, this is excellent and we do encourage the use of Zoom, but there's a few features which I'd like to point out today which will hopefully allow you to make better use of the app and also it will make sure that you're staying safe online with regards to cyber security. So the first thing I'd like to draw your attention to is your security settings. So you can find all of these in your Zoom profile if you log on to a browser and go into your settings, as you can see I've done here. Uh, there are a few settings in here which I think are key to have a look at before you set up any meetings. The first one is requiring a password. Now I've got all my settings here on default, so these are as yours will be at the moment. Um, and as you can see, a password is required when I set a meeting up. So I would thoroughly recommend that you keep that on. Uh, this will allow uh, only the participants that you want to be there on the call and will uh, disallow any unwanted guests from coming in to the meeting. Another thing to point out is the waiting room. So this is quite useful, again, for moderating the attendance at any lectures or meetings. Uh, if you have a waiting room enabled, uh, as you can see I've done here, I can make sure that only the participants which I allow to enter the meeting will indeed come into the meeting. Uh, and the last thing I'd like to show you here is the screen sharing options. So we can have, um, some settings in place so that the host can only share their screen. Uh, if you want participants to be able to share theirs, you can keep theirs as that. But all these settings are available on the settings tab on your Zoom profile. Now the next thing I'd like to talk you through is how to navigate your way around the Zoom client itself. So I'm going to go through the toolbar at the bottom here from left to right and explain a few key features. So you have the basic option and this is under the manage participants section. Uh, you can get the basic options to mute or unmute all participants, but here we've got a few useful settings as well. We can mute participants on entry, and if you do that, you can either allow or disallow them to unmute themselves, uh, which will allow you to moderate who is speaking when, and this in tandem with the waiting room setting, uh, which is also here, we covered that in the last section, uh, but you can again moderate very closely who will be in the meeting. Now, if you're in a meeting and you don't want anyone else joining, you can simply lock the meeting. This will disallow anyone else from joining the meeting. Okay, so the next thing I will talk you through is the share screen. Uh, there's just a few options that you need to look at here and they are under advanced sharing options. Now you'll see, uh, you'll recognize these from the settings page that I looked at at the start. Uh, and this is really just to decide whether or not it is all participants or the host that can share their screen. So you can choose either. Um, on the chat section, you can moderate this quite closely. So if you don't want any chat, all you need to go is onto the chat tab here and then click no one under the uh, little more icon. Uh, if you want the host only to be able to post in the chat, you can do that. Or if you want messages from all participants of the group, either publicly or publicly and privately, uh, you can enable that there. Now there's just one more thing to cover and that is really how you get your meetings out there and how you invite people to them. So as you'll see, I'm again on the client and if I go to invite, you can invite people using emails. Now the only problem with inviting people via email is if it's for something like a lecture uh, and you try and email, you will get something that pops up like this email. Now in the email, it will contain both the meeting ID and the password. Now the problem is if this email is forwarded on to anyone else, they will be able to access the meeting just the same as the person you have sent it to. So perhaps a better way of dealing with this is by inviting people and just simply copying the URL. Now, as you'll see here, the URL has now been copied to the clipboard. I can email that to the people who I would like at the meeting and as a sort of self two-factor authentication type uh, communication, you can just send them in a direct message the password to the meeting so that only the can access the meeting. Um, in that email, you will have also spotted that it says here, do not share meeting inv invites on social media. That's there for a very good reason and it is in case, again, unwanted participants join in on the meeting by seeing the meeting ID. So that's all from us. I hope you get on well with using Zoom and I hope everyone is staying safe at home.